Well, you'd have to be living under a rock to not know that uh, modern monetary theory uh, exists. And uh, because it's become so prominent, it's also now coming under attack. So there's a recent motion uh, to put before the uh, Congress by uh, Congressman Hurd, saying that the US House recognise or realises the deficits are unsustainable, irresponsible and dangerous. And this is the actual resolution here and has a part of it down the bottom saying, uh, yeah, that's what I've highlighted there, so same thing. And uh, even Australia's uh, allegedly progressive party, the Labor Party, which is rather like America's Democrats, the leader of that has come out and uh, attacked the Liberal Party for the increase in debt that's occurred under the coronavirus. And similarly, we have um, accounting firms like McKinsey coming out talking about how they've got to close the $30 trillion gap that's going to be created by coronavirus. And their little comment that I've highlighted, I think I've highlighted one down here somewhere. Nah, okay. Same sort of thing. Let's see where we can find it. Um, yes. Uh, have to monetize their deficit, um, optimize the cost ratio. The greater challenge, this is a, a classic one, the greater challenge will be to ensure that increased debt servicing costs do not crowd out vital investments by the private sector, obviously, or trigger big tax increases that would damage competitiveness and reduce aggregate demand at a time of crisis. So it's rather important to work out what the macroeconomic impact of modern monetary theory actually is. And I want to illustrate that using my software package called Minsky. This is another uh, co commercial version of what we call, uh, we'll call Ravel. No, that's neither here nor there for this uh, demonstration. So what Minsky does is let you take a look at the world as an accountant does in terms of the monetary flows. And if you ever go to your accountant and just say, I've got these huge debts, these incredible liabilities. First question the accountant's going to ask, well, what are, the, what are the assets you have that might offset those debts? And the way that an accountant looks at the world is that uh, your net worth is your assets minus your liability. And they call the net worth either equity or capital, I'm calling we, we call it equity in Minsky. So what I want to do is set up a model of a, a, a pure credit economy, economy without a government sector, just with private banks, and look at what the situation would be for borrowers in that in that type of world and then bring the government in later. I can go in the reverse direction as well. I have done it reverse, but uh, I think it's easier to indicate uh, how the whole thing works by starting off with the, the fiction of a pure credit economy rather than the fiction of a pure uh, fiat economy. So my asset classes, I'm going to have a, a model here where uh, loans are made only to uh, uh, capitalists to establish businesses. So I'm using symbol K for capitalists, L for loans, and that's saying that the, one of the assets of the banks are the loans they make to capitalists. And then uh, what capitalists do with that is establish firms, and firms have deposit accounts, and that's one of the liabilities of a banking system. Uh, you then also have the uh, the capitalists themselves who have a banking system. Again, I'm leaving out the existence of paper money here, so all money in this model exists in bank accounts. And finally, you have workers who also have deposit accounts. And finally, uh, to the banking sector, one thing about being a bank is you must have positive equity. A bank ha has negative equity. If a bank's liabilities exceed its assets, it's technically bankrupt. One of my favourite indications of that was... Uh, the uh, comments that Hank Palson got from his successor at whichever, um, uh, I think it was Goldman Sachs, it's almost always Goldman Sachs, um, he got a call from his successor when he was uh, Secretary of the Treasury during the financial crisis, and basically this is recounted in his book On the Brink, and uh, the call goes something like, uh, Hank, you've got to help us, uh, we, we're going to go bankrupt if you don't do something. And uh, Paulson asked back, well, how long have you got? And the answer was, about three hours. And the reason that it was about three hours was that the liabilities of a bank pretty much remain constant. They don't vary a great deal. But the assets, when they involve shares, obviously, uh, can fall dramatically if there's a plunge on the share market. And the plunge was coming down so much that given the leverage level of Goldman Sachs, it was likely to go bankrupt without a government rescue. Anyway, bottom line is this must be a positive number. So I'm going to start off by uh, my little fictional economy saying it has, uh, let's say, the debt that capitalists owe to the banking sector is a hundred, that could, let's say a hundred billion dollars. And it starts off that uh, 
with the, how the economy has worked out so far, 70 billion is in the firm's deposit accounts, say 10 billion in the capitalist deposit accounts, 10 in the workers' deposit accounts, and the bank's equity as required is 10 billion dollars. So that's our initial conditions. Then I start putting in the basic financial operations that occur in a uh, in this model economy. So you have the banks the banks lend to capitalists. This is new lending. So uh, if they get a loan, well, what happens is the bank puts money in your bank account, and it says at the same time, there, there's the money you've got, uh, and you, by the way, that's what you owe us as well. So the two balance, what Minsky does all the way through, is make sure that the assets minus liabilities minus the equity equals zero, which is what this row is doing here. That's lending to capitalists. Well, of course, they also, you also uh, they repay some loans. There'll be repayments at different rates at different times. So that it means that's going to you take money out of your deposit account, and the bank uh, you give it to the bank, and the bank says, "Okay, thanks for the money. We're now going to reduce the amount we show you owing." And notice I made a mistake there. I meant to type a minus key. Minsky tells me, "Well, that's not equal to zero, so I've got to go back and delete that." So that's now a repaying. Then, of course, the only reason the bank lends is because they're getting interest payments. And that means uh, that money comes out of interest payments by capitalists. And I'm making another mistake here, but I'll leave it and show uh, in Minsky's role here. And if I then show um, interest payments over there, I've got to show this as a negative because money is coming out of the deposit account of the capitalists and going to the bank, the bank's equity. Then you have uh, higher workers. So you can, once, you've, once you've established a firm, uh, you now need to hire workers to work in it, so you've got to pay wages, and that's paid by the firm sector. Let's use a W, so wages come out of the firm deposit accounts and go into the workers. Uh, you pay dividends to capitalists. I'm going to have uh, indicate that with a, um, a D to, cap to K here, because and I'm going to have dividend paid by the central bank at some stage as well to the treasury. So there's paying dividends. And then you have consumption. So workers consume, and I'll use the symbol C, uh, so the amount of, of flow of C dollars per year, C underscore W dollars comes, it comes out of the workers' bank accounts and is paid to the firms. Uh, bankers do the same. And capitalists do the same. And pay to firms. So that is a, in terms of financial flows, that is a, the basic idea of a, a uh, the, the fundamental financial flows in a monetary economy. And I can now just uh, show this in Minsky, pardon me. Uh, so I'll call this the banking sector. and put it into what we call editor mode. This is something we're still working on. It doesn't quite work yet, but it'll get there. Uh, turn off the row and column buttons you don't need to see and turn up displaying variables. And there's a little model that I've put together of the financial flows in a monetary economy. Now, what I've got to do is say, well, that, that, that's what the actual flows look like. Uh, What's the, what, 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 the, what, what happens with the monetary tenor? Does this describe a viable economy? So to do that, I need to um, take the variables, the, the flow variables. Uh, these are all the elements. These are the flow variables here. Uh, new loans to capitalists, repayment by capitalists, interest payment by capitalists, wages, dividends, consumption by workers, consumption by bankers, consumption by capitalists. That's all of those. And I want to take a copy of the stock variables, which are the uh, debt of capitalists, deposit account of firms, deposit account of capitalists, workers, uh, wage, uh, workers deposit accounts, and the bank's equity. And I'm now going to relate those to each other, which I'll do in the next video.